Hi, this is Azhara Muhammad from Egypt, and this is the third year in row to participate in this conference. I'm very happy to participate with you and share a new work I have published. I think you might know that I'm interested in antimicrobial resistance and developing new antimicrobial agents. The first time I participated in this conference was in 2022. At that time, I shared my first published article on a natural antimicrobial protein produced from bacteria. And on 2023, I shared my second published article on using a combination of nanoparticles and antibiotic. But today, I'll share another work about uh, antimicrob developing antimicrobial agents, but this time, it's related to the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. So, the title of today's presentation is Pomegranate Peel Extract as an Effective Antimicrobial Agent Against Multidrug Resistant Bacteria. This article was published in the Journal of Cellular and Molecular Biology. It was published in May 2023. Before I come through this work, I would like to thank my co-authors on this work, and also I'd like to thank the sponsorship of the Scientific Research Deanship at King Khaled University at Abha, Saudi Arabia, uh, for supporting this work under the project number GRP1643. Before I go through the work, I'd like to present or to talk about the motivation and the background behind this work. On 2014, the World Health Organization announced that the number of deaths associated with antimicrobial resistance was around 0.7 million. It's less, less than 1 million. This number of deaths was associated with antimicrobial resistance in uh, bacterial and fun fungal and viral infections. However, on 2019, this number jumped dramatically to reach around 5 million. Uh, of this is associated with only bacterial antimicrobial resistance. This doesn't include uh, the fungal antimicrobial resistance or the viral antimicrobial resistance. According to the study published this results, there were six leading pathogens highlighted and were found to cause around 3.5 million of this. These six leading pathogens included Staphylococcus aureus, especially the mycelin resistant or MRSA strains, which caused 100,000 of deaths. And this number of deaths were commonly found in cancer patients and bloodstream infected young children. The second of these sex leading pathogens is P. erginosa, which can cause a variety of infections, including keratitis, pneumonia, wound infection, and even formation of biofilms on medical devices like catheter and other medical devices. Uh, then the Escherichia coli, Klebsiella pneumonia, and Acinetobacter pomeni, uh, which are common causes of uh, bloodstream infections, urinary tract infections, uh, pneumonia, and uh, in the recent years, it's noted that uh, there was a great prevalence in carbapenem-resistant uh, infections of these strains. And lastly, the Streptococcus pneumonia, which can cause bloodstream infections, otitis media infections, pneumonia, bronchitis, and sinusitis. According to the survey published by the uh, World Health Organization on 2014, the expected number of deaths associated with antimicrobial resistance could reach uh, 10 million a year by 2050. This is not only the motivation behind our work, it's also the motivation behind the World Health Organization to publish the first research agenda for antimicrobial research for achieving the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals in Human Health. And this, this research agenda included 40 research priorities. Um, it's divided into five categories. The first four categories uh, named uh, prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and cross-cutting were mainly related to the bacterial and fungal antimicrobial resistance. So uh, the target uh, or, or the research priorities recommend, recommended by the, by the World Health Organizations to the researchers interested in antimicrobial resistance um, is like to pay the attention of the researchers to focus on research priorities, the axis or the path of prevention of antimicrobial resistance 
uh, rapid uh, or developing new diagnostic tools uh, for diagnosis of antimicrobial resistance uh, or antimicrobial resistant strains and uh, the treatment and care and the cross-cutting uh, for prevention or uh, for stopping uh, the prevalence of antimicrobial resistance. And lastly, the fifth category of uh, this research agenda was mainly focused on the tuberculosis, mycobacterium tuberculosis, and it included seven research priorities. So the solutions for uh, stopping or treating the antimicrobial health problem could be could take two directions. The first direction is developing new antimicrobials, and the second is the surveillance of uh, on antimicrobial use. So, regarding the surveillance of uh, on antimicrobial use, the World Health Organization have published several strategies and approaches to monitor and follow the consumption and the prevalence of antibiotic uh, resistance in hospital and healthcare units around the world. Regarding developing new antimicrobials, it could take two directions. The first direction is to find or develop a new antimicrobial agent, and the second is to develop the currently used antibiotics. Um, regarding finding new antimicrobials, I worked on previously on a natural antimicrobial protein produced from microorganisms, and this is um, a category or an area uh, of interest of uh, many researchers. Also, regarding developing the currently used antibiotics, uh, in the last year's uh, presentation in this conference, I shared my work on developing new antimicrobial agent resulted from combination of zinc oxide nanoparticles and meropenem. Today, work is related to uh, developing or finding new antimicrobials from a natural resource, natural waste, and this is what it makes it related to the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. When we think about developing new antimicrobial agent, we not only care with the human health, we also consider the animal health and the environmental health. And this is finally falls uh, or serves for the sustainable development goals in human health and uh, life on land. So this study began with uh, isolation and identification of uh, different clinical isolates, included Klebsiella pneumonia, Acinetobacter bumani, mesocellin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, uh, Pseudomonas fluorescens, and Mycerium. Afterward, we uh, performed antimicrobial susceptibility testing to assess or to detect the antimicrobial resistance profile of these strains, and then we began working on preparation of pomegranate peel extract. We use the dry pomegranate peels uh, to prepare an ethanol extract and this extract was then used for testing the antimicrobial activity against these strains. Then we determined the uh, diameter of inhibition zone to compare it with the, the diameter of uh, resulted from antibiotic, uh, antibiotic discs and then we determined the uh, MIC minimum inhibitory concentration and MBC minimum, minimal bactericidal concentration of this extract. Moving to the key results of this study, we found that most strains of uh, Staphylococcus aureus, Klebsiella pneumonia, and Acinetobacter bumani showed a high resistance against, high resistance against uh, most of the tested antibiotics from different groups, and the Klebsiella pneumonia was totally 100% of uh, resistance against all the tested antibiotics. So it it's important as a researcher for me and you and everyone interested in developing new antimicrobial agents to think about such strains which shows a high resistance profile. However, this study is just a preliminary study. It's not uh, an advanced study. It's a preliminary study and it's considered like a qualitative study showing the antimicrobial effect of pomegranate peel extract. As we see here in, in plates number A, B, C, and D, uh, it's the activity of uh, pomegranate peel extract against the MRSA strains. Uh, in plate E, it's against uh, vancomycin resistant enterococci, and in plate F, it's uh, the effect of pomegranate peel extract against Acinetobacter pomani. 
The diameter of inhibition zone against MERS strains ranged from 12 to 15 millimeters. Against Sinitovactor Bumani, it ranged from 22.6 to 23.1 millimeter. And these are promising results that could be used further for developing a natural antimicrobial agent. Then we compared the antimicrobial activity uh, of the pomegranate peel extract at different concentration. And as we see here in this figure, uh, the antimicrobial activity of pomegranate peel extract increases with, uh, with the increase of concentration. The main conclusions of this study the there was a great prevalence of, uh, of antimicrobial resistance among the clinical strains and it, it keeps in continuous increase. And to achieve the sustainable development goals in human health and uh, the environmental health, we should think about the natural uh, resources like plants, microorganisms, and these, uh, these things. Uh, we can use fruit peels to transform it from just being a waste to use it as a potential resource for uh, developing uh, new drugs or uh, extracting new uh, antimicrobial agents or even other agents that could serve as drugs for other diseases. The results of this study showing that the pomegranate peel extract could serve as uh, an efficient antimicrobial agent. Although this study uh, have several limitations and it's considered like a preliminary study, it pays the attention of the researchers interested in this area to uh, continue on this uh, on these findings to develop uh, new antimicrobial agents. So it's important to evaluate the antibiofilm potential of this extract uh, to detect the active components and the active compounds in this extract. Also, uh, I think it's important in this era of uh, increasing antimicrobial resistance to uh, work on the preclinical assessment of the uh, antimicrobial agent you are studying to evaluate the toxicity toxicity and determines the dosage of this antimicrobial agent. Finally, I'd like to uh, end this uh, presentation by saying that plant extracts are, are natural and natural resources rich in several, several active compounds that could serve as a potential antimicrobial agents for tackling and stopping the growing threat of antimicrobial resistance. Thank you for your attention and your interest I hope you found this presentation is useful and I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions in the comments below this video.